Kingdom Hearts Recoded. This game certainly seen its fair share of controversy. On one end of the spectrum, Recoded is viewed rather fondly by the fandom as a faithful reimagining of the original game onto DS. Others, however... Guys, I gotta go inside to look. Who's to say if it's even safe inside, Riku? What fucking wobbly dildo wrote this bullshit? Boiling hot excrement does not actually come close to describing this. Fucking stop, you creativity vampires. Over the course of this review series, I made it no secret as to which side of the pond I was in. Let's watch my favorite part again, shall we? <laughs> what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Oh, no, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! Needless to say, I imagined this video was going to be pretty negative, devolving into a 20 minute rant about RAAAAH! Recoded game bad! Rawr. Now while I'm sure that would have been fun to make, I doubt my overall argument would have been very interesting to listen to. Fortunately, you guys reached out to me, telling me to quit my bitching and simply sit down and play it. Don't half ass this review, don't just review the film, give the game a fair shake and make damned good on your investment. So, that's what I did. Recoded's existence in the franchise is a rather odd one to say the least. The game was originally just known as Kingdom Hearts Coded, a mobile title that acted as a puzzle game with a Kingdom Hearts theme. The game however would go on to being remade for the DS in 2011, by the same team that brought us days. Eventually, Recoded would even find itself worked into the 2.5 Remix pack in 2014, as yet another film adaptation. In all honesty, this game really did surprise me. Having only recently played through Days Again, Recoded really did open my eyes to some of the more subtle flaws that I overlooked in my Days review. As such, it was really interesting to see how Recoded sought to overcome these technical problems. However, before we dive into the gameplay, we really ought to address the heffalump in the room. The story. Nothing happens. I think this is where most of the animosity towards this game stems from. When it comes to Kingdom Hearts, a significant proportion of the fanbase had been deeply engrossed by the overall narrative of the series, as we edged ever so closer to the next big Kingdom Hearts adventure we'd all been pining for, Kingdom Hearts 3. And so every game following the release of Kingdom Hearts 2 sought to build upon the foundations of the series. They introduced a diverse set of new characters, a plethora of new worlds to explore, and the lore was greatly expanded upon. Recorded, however... Sora is our friend, and that makes him our power. Let's, Let's see it together. together. My Let's friends are him. my power. My friends are my power. Remember that line? We're doing it again. Because fuck you. Upon returning to Disney Castle, Jiminy Cricket reflects upon his adventures with Sora, Donald, and Goofy. In spite of their triumphs, however, Jiminy remains perplexed as to why the words he wrote during Kingdom Hearts 1 have mysteriously vanished, save for one statement. Thank Namine. As Jiminy scrolls through the empty pages, 
He discovers an enigmatic message in the journal that he didn't write. The hurting will be mended when you return to end it. Coincidence? I think not! Intrigued by the riddle's meaning, Jiminy requests the aid of King Mickey, Donald, Goofy, as well as Chip and Dale. They plan to digitize the events recorded in the journal. Upon opening the journal, however, How inconvenient! In order to repair the data, they enlist the help of a digital version of Sora. And so off we go on a uh, less than uh, original adventure where we get to jump around a uh, select number of worlds we uh, visited during Kingdom Hearts 1 again. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. This unfortunately represents the crux of this game's problems. From a narrative point of view, there's absolutely no risk involved, as we already know how Sora's story unfolds. As a consequence, nothing you accomplish really amounts to anything of significance. This is where the film version really suffers. Despite the great animation and excellent voice work, it's likely many fans of the series chose to ignore this film. This is the only side of the game we get to see. It's narrative. A story that's already been told. Twice now. It really is a shame, as the devs went the extra mile here. It's all that I have. It's what holds the pieces in place. I accept that. You say you accept it? It's not a game! <gasps> it's way past time that you learned what real hurt feels like! <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. This was an aspect I found was woefully lacking in the day's adaptation. Iconic events like Roxas leaving the organization and his subsequent duel with Syx, for example, were simply not included. And so we're just left with the impression that Roxas just wandered out of the castle scot free, when that really wasn't the case. There's no reason for me to be here. Another issue I have with the plot is that this game adores creating drama between Data, Sora, and Riku. Riku. Oh. You know what? You gotta stop doing everything by yourself. This is taking forever, Shrek. I like getting dragged into your messes. Donald and Goofy said that. Friends want to help you out whenever they can. Ah! I've been sitting here for days! Start the damn joust before I piss myself! But we haven't even got to the best part of this plot, however. <laughs> so after hours and hours of replaying the same levels in Kingdom Hearts 1 again, successfully eradicating the virus, the journal's data... is reset. The journal will go back to the way it was. Yes, it should return to how it was, when I first wrote everything down. Without all those pesky bugs, the journal entry should appear back in their original state. The entries will reappear as they were before, and all of the rest has to be reset. That means the whole adventure we all shared. It'll be swept from our memories like it never happened. There comes a time in all forms of media consumption where you are so utterly bewildered by an event taking place that there are so many things wrong with it that you don't have words. What. The. Fuck. What the fuck are you doing? This actually fucking happens. Honestly, the only slither of plot that's even remotely important takes place at the very end of the game. Plot points that are almost immediately covered in the introduction of Dream Drop Distance. If we are ever to strike down Xehanort, we need the individuals King Mickey spoke of in his letter. We must lead them out of sorrow and slumber and back to our world. There comes a time in all forms of media consumption where you are so utterly bewildered by an event taking place Anyway, with that train wreck out the way, how about we get on with the gameplay? 
Considering this game is largely based around KH1's level design, I can't say I was overly excited to have to put up with the annoying platforming again. This was an issue that persisted in several worlds featured in Days as well. Fortunately, Recoded actually puts in the legwork to make both combat and movement work seamlessly in tandem. Recoded really excels at utilising the virus blocks in interesting ways. From forming physical barriers, to improvised stairwells, to deadly enemies and elaborate platforming challenges. Another aspect of the virus that I really enjoyed was how it seeks to tamper with the world around you. This often puts a neat twist on iconic boss encounters from Kingdom Hearts 1, where you'll be introduced to a totally different style of play. Unfortunately, not all of these have been met with enthusiasm. The unpredictable nature of movement and combat suddenly being changed on the fly can be rather difficult to adapt to. I found the Final Fantasy VII system in particular quite frustrating, as often your battles were left to chance. While this is perfectly fine when it comes to dealing with regular heartless mobs, boss encounters like Hades and Cerberus were particularly infuriating. They can withstand a ton of punishment, and have a variety of moves that can just as easily put you in the red. Fortunately, other scenarios were far more enjoyable. In Wonderland, for example, the devs brought back the stealth system from days, we have to avoid patrols of card soldiers to progress. The virus, however, frequently tampers with how they behave, and so in order to get by, Sora has to enter a sort of debugging phase to repair the data. These are arguably the most rewarding stages in the game. They usually boil down to Sora hunting down a series of infected Heartless, whether they be mini-bosses or enhanced versions of common foot soldiers. In addition, these phases often give you some form of bonus objective to accomplish. These range from avoiding damage or completing a stage before time runs out. You can gamble on high reward points, which can then be redeemed for valuable prizes, particularly for growing your stats. What I really loved about Recoded the most is that it does a great job encouraging the player to determine their own unique playstyle. Which brings me onto the Command Matrix. Rather than having to figure out an ever-changing puzzle, players simply have to mix and match stat chips to form power lines that connect to various bonuses on the motherboard. Connecting to CPU cores, for example, will double all the stats connected to that power line, and these values could even stack. Following other paths, however, can lead you to other unique rewards. These range from special abilities, or even unlocking various cheat turners. Experimenting with these cheat turners can really drastically alter your overall experience. The command deck from Birth by Sleep also makes a return here. I wasn't a big fan of this system simply because of how hilariously exploitable it was. While allowing the player to choose their own fighting style was a great idea in theory, it utterly backfired in execution due to how fundamentally broken certain abilities were. Recoded fortunately doesn't suffer from this problem, however. While the game offers a wealth of useful abilities, I never found any specific ability to be ridiculously overpowered. So in effect, you can make Sora and the game behave however you like, while still maintaining a sense of balance. So this is it. Time for us to leave. And time to say bye to the datascape. So overall, what is my final verdict behind Recoded? Is the game any fun? Is it worth getting? Well, it depends on what you're invested in. If you've been following the Kingdom Hearts series up to now, and are mainly invested in the story, then chances are this game will seriously disappoint you. While Recoded has a lot to offer in terms of gameplay, its narrative is just fundamentally dead in the water, and does virtually nothing to progress the overall story arc forward, save for but a handful of cutscenes near the end of the game. On the other hand, however, if you're just looking for a fun Kingdom Hearts spin-off title, then you'll probably get a fair bit out of this. 